Hey, welcome to your day off. My name is Corey. Of course, it's my best bud, Tone. What's up, man? What's up, brother? So, uh, once again, we're at BTC 2019. And, yeah. uh, and the, again, I mean, I think I've said it a couple of times. The coolest thing about these events is that we get to, like, pick up people that we normally don't have access to. Yeah, today's guest is going to uh, show us how bad we really uh, speak English. <laughs> I'm hundred sh- percent. Yeah, 100%. It's <laughs> how so jacked that we. <laughs> I know, right? It's so funny. Like at the when we started the podcast, like you know, it was so important to sound like broadcasters, and then at some point, we just have to be like, "Did we? Did we kill the English language? There's no yeah. way we're going to be bought broadcasters." <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> it's so uh, stupid. Oh my goodness, that's so, so true. It's so it's so true. It, it 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 relieved a lot of stress when we decided not to be pro- um, broadcasters and just be you know hairdresser knuckleheads, right? <laughs> you know, um, but, but I mean, get down to it. Today's guest, though, uh, man, uh, he's achieved some uh, some big things in the industry. You know what I mean? And one of the probably the the most revered sought after award is a british hairdressing award and this guy has one dude i kind of got the chills when you said that because uh you know we've had out of everyone that we've had on you know we have very few of those right yeah that's probably the most prestigious award in our industry agreed i'd yeah, agree right. completely so uh to have this guy at our table all the way pretty- from the uk right yeah all right, you already started, so might as well finish. <laughs> Let's go. So uh, today, our guest is Kevin Lutchman. Did I get it? You got Did it. You yeah, we, we even jacked that up. He had to correct us. <laughs> <laughs> no, right. <laughs> like you said, he's going to teach us how to speak English, apparently. Right. <laughs> um, so today, our, our guest is Kevin Lutchman. And uh, like you said, man, he's just he's a, he's a brilliant hair stylist. He's a, a, a brilliant barber. Barber. A, yeah, man. Uh, brilliant yeah, photographer. Yeah. 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 Actually, we need to give a shout out to our boy Curtis because uh, Curtis actually put Kevin on our radar. Curtis Stash. Curtis Stash. Curtis the Stash. He kind of put us on our radar, I don't know, maybe a year ago, maybe 10 months ago. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I know that we tried to make it work a couple of times. We just couldn't make it work. And uh, and uh, Kevin is a really sweet guy, but he is the worst DMer on Instagram <laughs> ever. So don't ever send the dude a DM because he would never, <laughs> ever, ever get back to you. Right. I mean, or it's just something personal. So I don't know. Either right. The guy we ran into at the show I, I had to hold him down <laughs> had to hold him down carry him in bring him in <laughs> yeah <laughs> lock him up and stuff so uh should we get into it yeah let's do it so uh mr kevin lutchman is it man or mun mun you got well, it right the first time welcome to your day off man thank you very much and thank you very much for having me here oh man we're excited brother yeah, yeah completely man just i do all the re- a lot of the research not all the research i do a lot of the research chat for a guest and uh and try to you know go back as far as I can, and uh, you know what I mean. And just all the accolades that you, that you you have is impressive. But before we get into all that, I mean, where are you from? Where did you grow up? So, um, as you said, I am from the UK, um, and originally I'm from Maidstone, Kent, which is I'd say it's probably about an hour away from London, uh, down south. And um, yeah, that's where I was born and bred. Um, I currently now live North London. So, um, you know, a lot of my work was based in London, so I needed to live somewhere a little bit closer. Um, but, yeah, originally from a small town called Maidstone, in Kent. Awesome. How did, so how did you find the industry? Ah, uh, you know, I think just like a lot of people, it was um, by accident. Uh, it was one of those ones where when I was about 17, 18, I was at college. I was studying travel and tourism. And this story is um, one that not a lot of people know. You know, a lot of people know me for doing barbering, working for Tony and Guy. Um, but... Yeah, I started when I was about 17, 18. I was at college studying travel and tourism, and I've always had a shaven head. So I had a pair of clippers, and um, just like anything, one of my friends wanted his hair cut, and then randomly ended up cutting his hair. And then the rest is history, so they say. But yeah, that's how, that, how, how How was that first haircut? It was um, a very high, rounded off <laughs> <laughs> no, skin. No, Not even a fade, just no, a skin. No, no. <laughs> I tried a fade. Skin to long hair? <laughs> yeah, literally. It was a disconnection. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it was one of those ones. Like, I mean, you know, I didn't know what I was doing, but... You know, I was always a very creative person. So, you know, I was looking at it and I was like, oh, I need to take a little bit here and a little bit there. And then, yeah, just started cutting my other friends hair. And then that's really where it first started. Um, I knew a girl that works in a barbershop. Um, she got me a job there part time. And like anything, just practice, practice, practice and just always wanting to perfect what I was doing. So you just went from cutting your buddy's hair to a barbershop. Yep, that's the one. So done that. And then, um, yeah, just really just fell in love with it. Um 
it, but you know, it's one of those ones that like I love doing it, and you know, love talking to people, love meeting different people. Um, you know, back then, you know, I was like what nineteen, and you know, getting cash in hand, it was brilliant. Like it was one of the <laughs> ones I was like, oh yeah, you can start from seven in the morning, finish at seven at night. The more haircuts you do, the more money you make. And I was like, right, cool. You Let's know? do it, right? Exactly. It's funny because there was a rumor going around that uh, when uh -oh. you were in college with, uh, you know, you would cut your buddy's hair, but you would cut it for uh, beers. Yep, that's the one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Yeah, it was like beers and cigarettes. Right. You know, it was one of those ones. So the more heads he cut, the more beer he got. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, that's, that's true. You know, like initially, like it was never for the money. It was always just for, you know, receiving favors from people you know right. like whether they're buying me drinks on nights out like taking me out for food and do you know to be honest with you, it's the same now like you know i always exchange haircuts for either services like if i'm working with a photographer or a model or something like that you know mm -hmm. i think that's the great thing with what we do you know you literally can make someone feel so good and they're happy to exchange and like help you out if they've got things you know is the uh are there are the barber shops in the uk are they like the u.s like you kind of go in and you wait your turn and like like we had sophie on the podcast and she said like um she was working in a barber shop and people would wait like six hours for a haircut mm. is that kind of is it kind of the same kind of thing or yeah i mean like i mean don't get me wrong you get a lot of different types of barber shops in the uk as i can imagine that it's the same in the u.s um the barber shop i worked in the first one that was just literally a walk-in walk-out um, you know, there was no appointment. Don't get me wrong, you'd have people that would wait for you that would want the haircut. Um, previously, before, after that, sorry, then I worked for another barber shop that was appointment only. And then, um, but yeah, it's a mixture. Like, don't get me wrong, like, you know, I get the appointment things, but then, you know, guys being guys, you're always going to be quite spontaneous, you know, right. and just think to yourself, you know, you might be walking, shopping, you look in the mirror, like, oh shit, I need my haircut. <laughs> and then you go to a barber shop. And I need those rounded like, corners. Yeah, <laughs> I need to round my corners off. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's, you know, my experience, the UK market's very different to the US. Um, you know, people ask me that question, oh, what do you prefer? But it's different, mm -hmm. that, you know, and... It's the same, like, I can get inspiration from the UK, I can get inspiration from Europe when I travel to Russia, to America, to Australia, you know, and it's every country I go to, you know, I always just leave inspired. You know, this is my first time in Washington, like, even just walking around, like, the show, the BTC show, and, like, you know, watching people demo, seeing different haircuts. There was a guy in the lift. He had, like, this, he looked like a super cool guy. He had this fringe or bangs, mm -hmm. so you call it. Right. And he had a mullet. It was fate. I was like, man, you've got us real cool haircut you know but yeah that's cool man mm. we uh <laughs> fringe, or, fringe or bangs. bangs so so we were uh we took a class we we went to grand web mm -hmm. um and grandma had a uh what's it like an exchange program mm -hmm. so we were in bayswater um and uh, i think that's where their academy was or someplace i don't know but uh we were over there and uh, you know i'm in i'm in uh england and i'm cutting hair and they're teaching me how to cut hair and stuff and and uh i had this i had this uh client mm -hmm. this, this british client i mean at that time, she's probably 40, but, you know, she was, like, old enough to be my mom at that point, right? <laughs> so, like, I'm cutting her hair, and I get to the front, and the whole time they're saying, don't say bangs, don't say bangs, say yeah, fringe. Yeah. Of course, I'm sitting... Now, you know how, like, you cut a fringe? Yeah. Like, you're literally in her lap, <laughs> right? And I go, so tell me, how do you like your bangs? And, like, the instructor... <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, the instructor across the room heard me. He runs over, and, I'm, and at that point, it's like, I couldn't get her back in <laughs> quick enough, right? And she turns bright red, and I'm... Because... You know, basically, I just asked my mom <laughs> how she likes it. her bangs. <laughs> <laughs> so he comes over and apologizes and makes some like, uh, you know, stupid American joke, yeah. which you guys love to do. Um, we still won. <laughs> 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 but, um, but yeah, man, it was like, th th that was one of those moments, right? Yeah. Like, it's That's interesting it. how the language is so much different and the same. And I know. Don't ever ask your British clients how they like their bangs. bangs. Right. <laughs> Especially if they're male. <laughs> exactly um or and let's not ask him for a shag <laughs> yeah exactly want a shag <laughs> that's funny that's pretty awesome so um you have an interesting track because we you know we hear a lot of well a lot of people that we've talked to you know they, they go from cosmo to barbering mm -hmm. but um I, I don't know too many that have gone done the opposite way right yeah i've, have to I've kind of done 360 though so it's you know if we think about from when i first started as a barber working in a barber shop gained the experience for about i'd say four or five years and you know i was going to different shows and there's a big show in london that i used to go to salon international which i'm sure you guys have heard of in yep. october and I remember the guy that I used to work for in the barbershop, like he done, you know, a bit of stage work. So that's when I got my first taste for doing education. And that I'm talking like 
12, 13 years ago. And, you know, back then it was never what it was like now. Like, you know, shows have just gone massive. Like people, you know, the stages have been massive. And I remember working with him, like I was so shy on stage. I never would know how to talk. I just would want to smash out the haircut really fast. You know, I didn't want anyone to ask me questions. And then I remember walking around there and I saw like in the middle of the stage, this massive stand and it was Tony Guy and they had all these art directors there. There was, you know, cutting hair beautifully, talking beautifully. And, you know, I saw they'd go have a calories in different countries. And that's when I was like, oh man, I'd love to be a part of something big like that. And then I, I didn't get caught, bored of cutting men's hair, but I was like, there's more to cutting men's hair and fading and stuff like that. So then I was like, you know, let me try like ladies hairdressing, like hair's hair. And then that is really when I started like toning guy and then started to transition into cutting like ladies hair. And then talking about the 360s, um, back in February 2017 is when I left toning guy. And now I've just focused, focusing on just doing my men. So, you know, I'm still educating. I work for my own self. You know, I still travel around the world. You know, I've got my own on, uh, online education platform, mm -hmm. you know, and that is solely what I love doing. So it's, it's nice to come from a barbering background, try something a bit new and different. You know, pick what I like from the hairdressing. You know, I didn't like doing hair up. I didn't like doing color, but I understand it. And then now going back into the barbering, but then trying to merge the two together, you know, and that's that's kind of what I try to do. Right. He's, he's kind of like downplaying his, uh, <laughs> his ladies hairdressing uh, accolades. I know, right? You know what I mean? So how long were you with uh, Tony and Guy? Tony and Guy, I'd say within the company, 11 years, 11 and a half years, I'd say, from you, starting from... But you made it to global uh, international director, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that was a very, very... You know, with me, like a lot of people that know me on a personal level, I'm literally all or nothing. Like I'm like, I will go zero to a hundred. It's like anything I do, I will literally try and be the best of it. And that's the same with my barbering, with my hairdressing, with my photography. And when I worked for Tony and Guy, it was like, well, do I really just want to stay behind the chair cutting hair when I see all these art directors that I'm watching like on the screens, they're doing the demonstrations, they're traveling around the world. I was like, you know what? Fuck this shit. I want to be a part of that. And I will be a part of that. And yeah, you're right. Like, um, you know, after I left, or you know, I became an international art director, Tony Guy, headed up the men's course, done all the campaigns, done all the shows, headed up London Fashion Week, traveled to all the academies from Australia to Russia, um, done shows in America, all around Europe. And yeah, I got to the stage 2017 February where I was like, you know what? I'm happy with everything I choose. You know, I was the first person in over 50 years to bring in a clippered haircut within the Tony Guy collection. And I was like, you know what? That's my little stamp. Happy with what I've done. I now need to push myself even more. And when I left in February 2017, people asked me, oh, did you have a plan what to do? Didn't have a plan. I just thought, you know what? I need to push myself, put myself out that comfort zone and just go for it and see what happens. I love that. I lo it it kind of reminds me, I listen to a lot of like um, stand-up comedy and stuff, mm -hmm. and I'm always intrigued by like, you know, they do a special every two years, and then they have to start over, mm -hmm. right? They, 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 can't, they can't use their yeah. bits or anything anymore, and they have, exactly. to, you know, they have to kill it. Exactly. And that that kind of what it sounds like to me, and yeah. same kind of thing, they have no guidance, they just like, they go. Yeah. But I kind of want to bring you back, like, bring us back to those days where you weren't the international director, and like, and like what was it like, or, or, or what did you, when you were seeing like these directors and you knew you wanted to get there? What was your process to get there? Like, 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 what did you like? Was it like I have to work on X, Y, Z? You said you didn't like to do like like hair ups or yeah. up hair or something. But yeah. You know, so what was the process like. So going back, like, you know, when I thought to myself, right, I really want to work my way up to becoming an international art director. It's finding out like how do you get there first, you know, because you need to have some sort of path. And I remember just everyone saying, you know, you need to go on your days off to the academy. You need to shadow the art directors. You need to go on as many courses. You need to be seen by people. You need to be, you know, doing stuff on your days off. And, you know, with me, when I was working in London, like, I, I didn't know many people there. So all in my head, I was just like, any time that had off, I'd be doing like a test shoot. Like, I'd be cutting a model's hair. I'd be trying new different styles. And um, it was hard. Like, I'm, you know, a lot of people think... You know, it's the luck of the draw. You know, you've got to know someone like to get in. And it, it is true. Don't get me wrong. Like if you know people, it's an easier way of getting mm. in. But I just did not want to go down that road. You know, I just thought to myself, you know what? I'm going to work hard. I'm going to work so hard and I'm going to do something so different that people will recognize me for what I'm doing. So rather than like, oh, yeah, he knows so-and-so. I wanted people to be like, 
damn, he knows how to cut hair or like, you know, you know how to style hair and do something different. And I don't believe in luck. Like I believe that you have to find your own luck. I believe that, you know, you have to really work hard for what you want. And it was, you know, I'm going into a different story now, but it's all going to kind of start to make sense. In 2013, it was the second year that was in London. You know, I heard of these competitions and the biggest one that I heard of was the British Hairdressing Awards. And back in 2013, you know, I worked for Tony and Guy. I knew a lot of art directors that would enter that competition. And it was, you know, if you got a finalist, it was amazing. Like, everyone would know who he was. If you won it, oh, my God, like, you are literally the dog's bollocks. And I was like, questioning myself, oh, do I enter it? You know, people have a massive budget to do it. They use professional models. You know, there's lots of preparation. And I thought, you know what? I cut hair. You know, I'm in London. I can talk to people. So I started like reaching out to photographers, being like, oh, you know, hi, my name's Kevin. You know, I'd like to do a test shoot. You know, would you like a free haircut? You know, you know, trade for trade. Same with models. I DM models. Would you like a haircut? You know, like you've got a really cool style, you know. So I collaborated a team. And then from that, I thought, you know, I'll shoot for the British Hairdressing Awards. So I got this photographer to shoot for me, gained all the models, and then just started working on my different looks and then submitted it and didn't think anything of it. And then... Basically, what happened from that, um, got the email sent through saying that, you, congratulations, you're a finalist. And I was like, oh, my fucking God, I cannot believe it. Especially because there was another guy that got through to a final that had been sponsored by Tony and Guy at this point. Mm-hmm. So, and, and at this point, you were with Tony and Guy. Yes, yeah, so I was yeah, with yeah, Tony yeah. and Guy. But, like, of course, you can enter your own competitions. You know, and I was still representing the company, but I was funding it myself. And then um, got through to the finalist. So, you know, the, the difficult thing with the British Hairdressing Awards is it's a big competition it's a difficult one because you have to make a collection of four images then if you get through to a finalist then you have to do another four images so you have a big collection of eight so i was like i literally went hard and i went in with my four and then i was like oh my god this is amazing i got through what the fuck do i do next <laughs> so it's no, hold on I'm, I'm, I'm not understanding this. so you have to reshoot it or you no so you have to add an additional four images to make a whole eight collection so as we know you could take a thousand photos and only get one so yeah. you have to so with the british hairdresser award you have to you have to have eight stellar yeah, looks exactly eight out of the same shoot out of the same shoot and it has wow. to be four different models as well Whoa! So, yeah, so four, four different models, not yeah, eight. No, so four different models for your first round, and then four different models on your next round. So then you have to have, basically have eight different models, eight different looks that all together fits as a collection. You know, so and that's a difficult thing because it's like it's fair enough doing amazing haircuts, but like as a whole package to make something all piece and fit together, it's a difficult Whoa. thing. And you know, with the styling, the makeup, the way you want it shot, so. With that, um, yeah, I got free and I was like, <laughs> shit, I need to, you know, do another four. And they only give you a month. So it's like within that space that you've got through, you need to su- submit your next four photos within that month. So, so do you think the other guys already had their other four planned out? Yeah, so a lot of the times with, especially if you're getting sponsored by companies, because right. it's a big expense, you have to pay for your, your photographer, your model and all that. A lot of them, what they do is they'd get the eight models and try and f- do it all in one day. Sure. But I never... I never even questioned getting through to the finals. I never, you know, let alone winning it. So I only done four. So yeah, done it again. And then I just remember like, you know, the award ceremony. I was with my mum and dad. What if you ran out of money on the second four? <laughs> oh, that's what I mean. I was literally doing so many haircuts. I was just hustling through. And that's the stress of it. It's like, you know, because I funded it all myself. And people that, that the normal average budget for a British hairdressing would shoot for one round, so four images, is about £5,000. So we're looking at what, like seven? Seven, eight K? Yeah, exactly. Dollars. Um, yeah, and I just remember being in the wards. Mum and dad sit next to me. You know, the category comes up. I'm just like, yeah, cool. You know, it's amazing being here. You know, didn't think anything of it. I just remember my name being called out and I was just like, what the fuck has just happened? You know, everyone's going mental. All Tony and Guy have come over to the table, like, you know, I went up there and picked up my award. And then literally that 2013, that's where everything really started to kick off for me. Do you remember that speech or that whatever? Well, yeah. Do you know what? Funny enough, I don't remember the exact one, but I remember what I said. My last few words was hashtag SFTB started from the bottom. Now we're here. Right. and I thought to myself what the hell did I even just quote a Drake lyric <laughs> like, did you so, ask for a reimbursement yeah, from Tony the, guy no, so this is the thing so like you know the guy the guy that um, who got sponsored 
you know, he obviously didn't win, like, and I won. And my whole shoot, like, I must have spent probably about only about 100 pounds and that was on food water drinks for the models and photographers and this is what i always i like telling the story because you get a lot of new people in the industry that's like oh i'd love to do awards i'd love to do competitions but i can't afford it or like i don't know where to start we all started somewhere and i am living proof that you don't need a budget you don't need a big brand or like you know product company like supporting you if you work hard and you hustle hard and you collaborate a team and you are passionate enough in what you do you can do it you know and like I said, you know, for a budget of £100, I got amazing images. I won it, you know, and, you know, after that, I've been a finalist five times in a row. I didn't enter it this year, but I've been finalist five times in a row. Um, and I still don't pay any money because I've, you know, I've got my links, I've, you know, kept my relationships right. with people, you know, and now doing the photography, I shoot a lot of people in different categories. So like this year, like a, there's a girl that I shot for for London, she's through to a finalist. Last year, the avant-garde I shot and they won last year. So, you know, it's nice that I'm kind of taking the photography and the hairdressing element and helping people, mentoring them and, you know, kind of like guiding them in a way like, you know, not to like, it's not cheating, but like I'm guiding them because I never had that guidance. You know, I wish I had someone turn around and say, oh, you know, like try this angle, try that angle, you know, you know, don't rush it, you know, take your time. So yeah. So now, um, how, where'd you learn photography? I know, right? So another crazy story is um, I taught myself. <laughs> I, I literally like when I was in it's London, like barbering, <laughs> yeah, like barbering, like I. Oh, and like uh, the British hairdresser award, yeah, right? <laughs> I, you know we create art you know we create you know i I believe we are all artists and you know our canvas you know is our model or like client you know you know our tools are our scissors and our clippers and um you know i just wanted to capture nice pictures so i bought a small little dslr you know and started shooting away and i remember like back in the day i just like crank up the clarity you know just clank up the shadows drop the highlights you know and it just looked too fake but you know, just from that, just find your own style and just, just carry on progressing from that. And again, just carry on shooting. Just practice, practice, practice. Now, were you doing like YouTube videos and stuff, learning how to like aperture and all yeah, that good stuff? Yeah, yeah. You know, like obviously YouTube helped a lot. Um, but like anything, it's, if someone asked me a complicated, uh, something about a camera, like the mechanics, but I have no clue. People was like, oh yeah, what's the difference between like a mirrorless camera and a uh, full, fr-? I'm like, I don't know. Like so, did you just have one, like, like one has a mirror? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> did you just have like a, a loft above the academy. Like, did you just like never le- left? Left yeah. because here you are, you're, you're a global international director. Mm. Uh, here you are creating your own shoots uh, for you know the, the British Hairdressing Awards. Here you are, you're shooting uh, for other people who are entering and winning. Mm. Uh, you're you know, and you're and you're teaching yourself all these new things. Yeah. I mean, there's only so much time in a day. Yeah, but there's 24 hours in a day, oh. you know? So, and that's the thing, you know, there's there's too many people that say, I don't have time to do things up. You know, don't get me wrong. Like, you know, we've all got shit that we need to do, but it's like, I mean, I'll give you another story. For example, like I, I have an addictive personality. So like back in March, the end of March this year, through my traveling and, you know, it'd been like just over two years that I've been an independent artist. I literally slipped up so much from, I actually put on a lot of weight. So... I've been traveling, you know, just eating crap food, nice food, but like, you know, I was drinking, you know, I was doing this, that, and the other. In March, I was, I can only talk kg, so, yeah, but you'll, you'll get it. So, like, I was weighing about 96 and a half kg the end of March. I think that's 300 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's big. Like, it probably, to be fair, like, it probably isn't too far off yeah. that. So, I was weighing 96 kg, and then literally I said to myself, do you know what? Fuck this, man. Like, I need to, like, lose weight. I'm exhausted. I feel tired. I look like shit. Like, my skin was breaking out of spots. And I said, I'm going to start training hard. And just before I come to Washington, I think jumps and stairs on like 75 kg now. Wow. So it's like, you know, over like 20 kg that left, but it's because I had in my head, you know what? I want to do this. This is what I want to do. And this is what I'm going to do. And like you said, you know, like when am I going to find time? I'm going to find time. You know, after work, mm-hmm. I'm tired, but I'm like, well, an hour of my time going to the gym and just working on it. You know, it's not at the end of my life. And I always say, man, I can sleep when I'm dead. Right, yeah, right. Mm-hmm. No so doubt. if you want it bad enough, yeah, exactly. If you want it bad enough, you can have it. It's a lot of weight, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and kid, yeah. We just did the calculations. It was yeah. uh, it was about thirty, uh, about thirty five, forty pounds. Yeah. Wow. Um, 
That, that's pretty since March. Since right? March. I mean, as here well. we are in August. So, yeah, you know, so, there we are. But yeah, so, and yeah, talking about the loft bit as well. Um, you know, when I was working with Tony and Guy, like, I was fortunate enough when I was working in the academy, they had a studio upstairs. So I'd finish my shift. Um, which would be like nine till six. And this is like even after I'd won the British Hairdressing Awards because I still wanted to progress in my skill of photography and what I do. After I finished my shift, you know, I'd text a couple of my friends that are models, but like, look, do you want a haircut? Cut their hair after I'd finished work and then go upstairs and just shoot a couple of looks in them and just practice, literally just practice. Getting home at like nine, 10 o'clock, have a quick shower, put on some outfit on, go out on a night out, go network, meet up with my friends, party, go to sleep about three o'clock, wake up at like seven do the same thing again mm. you know and i don't get me wrong like i was so tired like but and you know i always i always say this you know people say you know oh yeah you know you're top of your game i'm like bullshit i ain't even fucking started yet mm. literally like i'm just still just working on what i really really want to work towards um yeah it's been, it's i mean been, early early on you said that like you were you're all or nothing yeah so what's your all right in this moment what's my all right now mm. Other than, you know, losing my, a lot of weight. Yeah, yeah. My, my all right now to this present moment, if you're asking me, is my son. Like, I've um, I've recently just had a little baby boy. He's three months. Oh, congratulations, he's man. he's yeah. the most beautiful thing ever. And I adore him. And everything, I said to myself, everything I do from this day on forward is for him. You know, why I work so hard? You know, why I just try and work on the next thing? Because... You know, I want to inspire him as well. You know, I want him to grow, to have that mentality to, if you want something in life, you can have that something in life, you know. I love that. So, man. yeah, that's that's my all at the moment. That's brilliant. And the gym. And the gym. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and the Kevin Lutchman brand. <laughs> yeah, so, so, Tony and I, we actually, uh, early on, in our, early in our careers, we were in like Tony and Guy salons and we mm -hmm. worked for them. And um, not the brand, but like, whatever you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. yeah we had uh the northeast uh tony guy uh or tg educator yeah. uh, sean shredwick uh yeah he was the uh, one of the directors for our shop and and with sean and like and, and it seems like a lot of like people that work for tony and guy a lot of those maybe it's anthony's fault or something but a lot of those people like um fell into photography as well it seems like a lot of and i don't know if it was anthony or whatever but it seems like like he, he or tony and guy or whoever um they just kind of made those things one mm. you know like like photography became a natural yeah. like, progression yeah, um, i think you, you know, kind of see that or yeah i think you know like with tony guy like, when, when working for the brand it was always it was about the haircut but it wasn't just about the haircut you know it was that overall package you know like from head to toe and you know i suppose when i started to really progress within the company started to work on the campaigns and the collections you know, the, it got to the stage that literally, like, even though I was doing one of the collection looks, I would cut that haircut fast, get it all sorted, and I'd always want to shoot the, my model, like, first. I'd be there with a the photographer, watch how he's doing it, you know, watch, like, you know, what he's looking for, looking at the lighting setup, get that over and done with. Once I was done, I'd hang around where the photographer was because I'd want to see, like, what they was doing you know, like where they'd be placing the light, you know, the mm. composition of where they'd be taking the photo, you know, how they'd be directing the model. Because, you know, taking a photo, there's there's a lot of different elements. It's not just about, oh, here's a camera, here's a light, boom, done. You know, you need to think to yourself, what is it that you're trying to capture? You know, and for me, I'm still practicing, you know, like uh, even though like, you know, I shoot for different magazines, you know, I've done a lot of fashion work. I'm still always trying to practice, you know. I might see a picture and be like, oh, that looks really cool. I wonder how they do it. And then I'd want to be like try and recreate that photo, but in my way. Was there one person in in the Tony and Guy Academy that was a a big mentor or influence? Um, all of them, all of them. Like the the great thing with t working the Tony and Guy is that there was. 20, 25 art directors and they all specialized in different things. They all had their different players. So I'd be, I'd look at one, I'd be like, oh, I'd love how his presence is on stage. Look at another, I'd love how he, you know, finishes off hair. You know, I look at another, I, lo I love the way how he talks about like, you know, his stories. And it's, you know, I always find it's like, you know, get your inspiration from different people, you know, pick and choose what you like, but you need to be the best person that you are. You know, I always, you know, don't copy what someone's doing because it's already been done. You know, you just really just want to be the best person that you are. That's impressive. Really impressive. Because a lot of people get like just focused maybe on one person or locked in on one yeah. person. 
and they ignore you know what's the rest of it's going around them exactly and uh obviously you didn't do that yeah but well, that's the thing you know it's the same with barbering like you know it's massive at the moment you know i know in america it's massive and it's like with me it's like i don't want to be just known as the person that can do a fade or the person that can just do afro hair or the person that can just do a beard or long hair like you put any haircut in front of me i'll do it you know because i want it to be an all-rounder if you want me to do a design or a pattern i'll do it like you know and that's the thing you know my background if you want him to do an updo yeah if you want me to do you know your down below bits I'll do it yeah you saw that video oh, I did, I did. that's what came to my head I'm trying to like google where he works <laughs> um, but yeah it's like you know it's it's just one of those ones you know I just think you know be be true to yourself you know be humble you know, and just learn as much as you can, you know, because you never stop learning. You know, that's one thing I always say. You can never stop learning, especially in the industry that we're in. You know, from this podcast, you know, I'm learning from you guys. Like, I'm watching you guys, how you interact with each other, you know, how you're presenting this, and I will take something from it. You know, and that's, that's the thing with me. I literally tried to pick up so many different things mm. from different people. You inspire me, guys. Ah. Oh, Kevin, you're so nice. I, I think I would probably go crazy if I try to if I if I was thinking like that trying to pick up something I think my mind would just like boom yeah, you know what yeah, I mean cool. I'm impressed bro thank you hey do you think that I'm um, starting off as a barber and I mean correct me where I'm dumb but um like barbering is so structure based and like mm -hmm. how you see it is structure wise do you think that that kind of helped you with women's hair uh, as opposed to like because you know when you're barbering you're cutting inside the head mm -hmm. and like you know with, with women's hair you're cutting like outside yeah. the hair so do you think that that, that helped with your photography and all that or, or yeah I think um, you know the, the, the funny thing I would say when I was when I first started barbering like it was predominantly doing fades it was doing shorter haircuts and it kind of is what you see is what you get. Mm -hmm. So especially if you're doing a fade, it's like if you do a fade really well, it looks amazing. If it do it bad, it looks really shit. So mm -hmm. I suppose when I'm I went, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but I think when I went into the ladies hairdressing, there was like, Oh yeah, you can point cut. Nothing needs to be the same length. I was like, damn, <laughs> I'll be point cutting everything. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean like, you know, barbering really helped with that structure and like, you know, with the, the discipline of trying to get something as perfect as you can possibly get it, you know? Um, and then, yeah, it translates into photography because, sure. you know, you're, I'm looking at geometric shapes. I'm looking at the angles, you know, and, you know, if we think about like when you're cutting hair, you don't just think about the hair. You're also going to think about the face shape. So then I take that into consideration when I'm doing the photography, you know, like, Oh, how is, how am I going to complement this model when I shoot her? to compliment her as a person, to compliment the haircut, to compliment the picture. So it's literally thinking about the whole thing, wow. you know? And I mean, you're, what you said about like my brain being like, or it, it really is like it, my brain, like I'm always thinking of like so many different things. Like one thing I always think of is like, even though I'm doing the show for Victory Brand Product tomorrow, 10.30 a.m. That's our friend, my, Maddie Conrad. Maddie Conrad. Maddie Conrad. Even though I'm doing that tomorrow, I'm not actually thinking about that. I'm going to be in Brazil on Saturday and I'm thinking about what I'm doing next. I always try and think about what I'm doing next. So I've got a big show that I'm doing in Brazil. I fly to Brazil on Saturday. The show's on Sunday and Monday. And that's what I'm thinking about. But then when I'm there, I'll probably be thinking about the next thing that I'm working on. So I'm always trying to think one step or two steps ahead of what I'm doing. So at the same time as you build the Kevin Lutchman uh, brand, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I know when you started, uh, when you left TG, or I mean Tony and Guy, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. uh, to start the Kevin Lutchman brand, uh, and this is what, 2017 you mm -hmm. left? Correct. You know, where do you see your brand going now? What are you doing? Um, I always ask myself that question, you know, what is it, what is my end result? Like, what, what is it that I am actually working towards doing? I, you know, I ask myself, why do I work so hard? Why am I grafting? Why am I not sleeping? Like, why am I consistently thinking of new things? Why am I consistently pushing myself? Like, for what reason? You know, and I think, what, am I doing it because I want to make loads of money? Am I doing it because I want to be happy? Am I doing it because I just want to improve myself? Am I doing it just because I'm bored? Like, you know, I have so many different questions that I ask myself. Um, and my honest and truthful answer is i literally just do not know like when people say like what what's your next thing going 
or what you're working towards. Like I have let small little like challenges and small little like tasks and things that I want to work towards. But the overall end goal, I suppose, well, it's to make my mum and dad proud. It's to make my son proud. And I suppose just to be proud of myself for what I'm doing, mm. you know. Um, you know, I am literally a one-man band. Like I run everything like i work for myself there's only one person that i have working for me that's my accountant that's it mm. and i speak to him maybe once a month just about bits and bobs other than that the whole branding the photography the website the tutorials everything's all me you know so, the, so if it's shit it falls on you exactly because the one thing is if i do something wrong i have no one to blame except for myself and that's what i like because i I hate this whole shit of like trying to pass a buck to someone else and be like, oh yeah, that didn't happen because so-and-so didn't do it. Do you know what I mean? I'm just Mm -hmm. like, look, if I want shit done, I'm going to do it myself because I just hate depending on people. And it's not because I've been let down. Like we've all been let down by people before, but it's just, it just gets frustrating. I'm just like, do you know what? Fuck this shit. Like, you know, I've dealt with a photographer before. Like he didn't capture how I want to capture my work. Fuck it. I'll do it myself. You know, same with the editing. Isn't there like freedom in that though? Yeah, a hundred percent. There's there's a lot of freedom in it and there's you know, I look back at things that I've done, I look back to the collections that I've won, I look back to the awards that I've like There's no sleep know, in it. I'm just like, <laughs> do you know what, like who do who have I got to thank? And I without me sounding too arrogant, I just thank myself. I'm like, do you know what? Fair fucking play. You've worked hard, you've grafted, you know, and you've not complained about things. You've just gone out and you've just done it. Well deserved. Yeah. Mm. And don't get me wrong, like, you know, there's competitions that I don't win. There's competitions that I've entered and I've not got through to the finest. Do you know what? Fuck it. Right. There's always a next time. You, you know? tried. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Tried. I mean, that's, that's all it. we can do. That's it. <clears throat> and you're not supposed to win everything. No, exactly. You know what I mean? <clears throat> to be honest with you, I quite enjoy not winning because then it just i'm just like okay cool that wasn't good enough right let's work towards the next one and let's really push it you know and it's that whole saying you know who you in competition with i'm only in competition with one person that's myself yeah yeah but he was he's been a finalist uh ever since he won that thing every year yeah. except for this year because he didn't enter yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah hey so let's go back to 2013 for a sec um mm-hmm. did your parents like understand what just happened my mum and dad, they're both retired now, but they're both psychiatric nurses. Nothing to do with the industry. They don't, they don't, to be honest with you, I still think to myself now, they don't really kind of get what I do. I mean, they do. They, they get it and they, they see it. My, mom's, my mum and dad are super proud of me. They're always like re things and like post things and like flash screen pictures and it's great. And they, they, they love it. But back in 2013, when I was like, oh, do you want to come to the awards? They came and I was like, oh, there's a lot of people here. Like, you know, they just thought it was just something small. But, you know, it's it's taken me places, you know, and it's crazy because, you know, you talk to people that's not in our industry and, oh, what do you do for a living? Oh, yeah, I cut hair. Oh, that's cool. You know, but they really have no fucking clue, like, what cutting hair can really do for you. And, you know, when I talk to students, like, you know, that are learning or people like new in the industry, you know, I always make a point hairdressing can really take you places that you can you can literally make someone feel from zero to a hundred and i'm talking that is everyone now anyone that you know like myself i have no hair but after about two three days i'm like i need a haircut people look at me like you're mad i'm like <laughs> yeah but it's like you you notice it you know same with your shaving you notice i don't and, <clears throat> yeah <laughs> it was the last time you shaved um but how old are you <laughs> <laughs> but um no, it's um, it can take you. To, it's it's so crazy because when I was seventeen, eighteen, I was at college. You know, I was studying traveling tourism because. What I does want, that even mean? You kept so, saying, I don't, yeah, "Yeah, so traveling tourism basically just means that you want to go and work in a holiday camp or you want to work on an airline." Do you know what I mean? Oh, right, that right, sort right. of thing. I think it's, it's like a hospitality. Yeah, hospitality. Yeah. yeah, 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 hospitality. Degree. So it's like, you know, when I was that young, like I wanted to actually work abroad. I wanted to travel a bit. And it's so messed up now because that is actually what I do with my hands. That's all you do, right. You know, and it's crazy. Like, I, I love it. Like, I enjoy it. I love meeting people. I love talking to people. Don't get me wrong. It's tiring. It's challenging. Like, there's times where I'm like, actually, I really don't want to talk to anyone. Like, mm-hmm. I actually just want to switch mm-hmm. off and just go in my room and just go to sleep. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, it, it is what it is, you know. And the good thing is that I do do this full time. So I'm not actually, I don't actually cut hair in the shop no more, mm-hmm. like back in London. 
um, I, I'm literally just on the road. Wow. It's yeah. pretty interesting that um, the conversation that we're having about this, like a lot of times this is our dinner conversation. You know, when you're out with, when when we go out to dinner at these shows and stuff mm-hmm. and you're with like traveling hair, hairstylists, like the, the first response is always like, you know, the grind of it, the drag of it, the like, mm-hmm. uh, you know, just, just how, it, uh, not, not in complaining, but just like how it beats your body down yeah. and stuff. And, but that's always like, what's the opposite of prefaced? But you know, the, after that conversation, it's always like, but hair, this dead thing that comes out of our head led us here. I know. It's right? crazy. Isn't like it? when you go to the parties and stuff, you're like, hair brought this together. Yeah. Hair brought this community together. It's you know? crazy. It's just, if you kind of think of what hair is and mm. what it isn't, I mean, it's it's literally a waste product that comes out yeah. of your body and that. Yeah, and you that cut it off and just throw it in the bin. <laughs> exactly. And, and it's created this entire industry. It's just, yeah. it's just so very amazing. few industries uh, takes you around the world like it's taken him. Completely, you yeah. know, and, and and so many, so so many people too, you yeah. know. Again, I mean, you know, with me, there's so many countries that I've wanted to go to visit and go on holiday, and it's crazy to think that my work has taken me there. You know, like I, I think sometimes as an artist, and sometimes doing what we do, I sometimes th- I sometimes feel we actually forget actually how much of an influence we make to people and what we actually do, how we actually make people feel, you know, and I think sometimes, you know, you need to really think to yourself, you know, I I talk to people and they're like, oh yeah, but we just cut hair and okay, we do just cut cut hair, but it's that feeling that you make someone feel like, you know, after you've cut their hair, you know, I've had people sit in the chair and they're like, oh yeah, yeah, I've really had my hair cut messed up last time, you know, the last person, I've never, oh, no one knows how to cut my hair, you know, like, oh, they don't know what, you know, what what suits me. And then you cut it and they're like, that is the best haircut I've ever had in my life. That feeling, that sensation. Oh my God, yeah. I'm just like, do you know what? Don't even pay me. I'm like, keep (laughs) keep your money. Yeah, You just did, right? Yeah, I'm just like, keep your money. Like, I don't, I take the money then. (laughs) But it's like, um, you know that feeling that sensation it's just amazing like it's so good it's crazy and you know like i've like i said i travel around the world i've cut celebrities before you know i've met people like people that i like you know see on tv i'm just like this is bonkers i'm just like (laughs) how the hair how the hell how the hair how the hair how the hair has this this (laughs) taken me here you know it's it's crazy but you know just hard work persistence patience you know, try not to get frustrated too much. You know, you can really, really, you can achieve anything you want in your in your life. It's you're 100 percent right. And um, for those that are listening, and like you know, the timeline of when we release this is a little weird. But last night we sat through the awards, mm. and it was just remarkable to see how like, and I put this in quote, how everyday hairdressers were creating just those amazing looks at yeah. the um, what's it called, the one one shot awards, one shot awards or at the yeah. one shot awards. Last. And it, I was just blown away by just. Again, they announced 25 per, was it 25 entries like per? Yeah. And it was just like, it, you're just blown away by, by what the people in this industry can yeah. do. And you know, not, not just visually, but you know, if, even for what they're doing with their clients. It's yeah. just amazing. Man. It's just the talent, the creativity. And I always think, to, you know, even like, you know, I, I judge the British Hairdressing Awards as well, you know, and every year I go there, I'm like, how the fuck did someone think of that? Like I look at it and I'm like, oh my God, that is amazing why didn't I think of that? Or like, you know, I'm just like, I go in there and be like, oh yeah, there's no way they can top off what happened last year. And then I'm like, wow. Last year was shit. Yeah, I'm like, last year was real shit. But it's, 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 it's amazing to think that people were really still pushing to like be the best of the best and, you know, really just create beautiful art. Yeah, I mean, you figure people have you in their crosshairs. I'm going to do better than than yeah. Kevin did. You know yeah. what I mean? Or take it to the next level. Yeah, exactly. And, and every year, I guess somebody takes it to the next level. Exactly that. So we have a friend, uh, Sarah Jane, who just won an AHA award, which is a pretty prestigious award as well. Mm-hmm. And um, the funny thing about her story is that uh, she's like she's self admitted. So I'm not accusing her of anything, but she's self admitted like type A. And like her entire her, her entire NAHA shoot, she was like it was so well planned out. And then it, it then it came shoot day mm-hmm. and um and all the p- images that they used for naha were miss shots there were misfires on the light and and uh where at first she said it like it was like frustrating because it wasn't in the plan mm-hmm. but then at the end of the day it was just like just it just it worked it just right happens, yeah. yeah yeah so do you have any stories like that or <sighs> all day long all day long like i i I'm, i've now got to the stage where i 
I have an idea of what I want to do, mm-hmm. not necessarily a plan because plans always change. And the thing is, if you've always got something in your head that you set want to do, when it doesn't go that way, then what? Then you're disappointed. Exactly. Or so it's like, cover. but yeah, I've had it before, like, you know, doing shoots. Um, and it's like anything, like sometimes it can work really, really positive. Like actually, funny enough, um, there was this shoot that I'd done, I'd say probably about two weeks ago before I came to Washington. I'm just going to show you guys just as a reference so you can kind of understand where I'm coming from. So it was one of my friends and he was basically a professional model. I've been cutting his hair for a very long time and he grew his hair down to about here. Mm. And he basically turned around and said, look, I'm bored of it now. I want to chop it off short, like how it was before, which was the skin fade. And I was like, look, we're boys. We haven't seen each other in time. Like, have you got like four hours to spare? Like, I want to basically just cut different haircuts on you. And he was like, yeah, no worries. And this one haircut I'd done originally in my head, I wanted to do like a mod haircut, like a very much a bowl haircut, you know, fringe coming down here and blow dry it tucked under. But he had curly hair. So as I started blow drying it, it started flicking up and I was like, man, this looks sick. And so I'd done it throughout the whole of the hair. It was basically this, and it blew up on social media because it like, it was doing something completely different that someone hadn't done before, but I'd done it purely by accident. Like originally that rather I've than I've seen that yeah I've rather than well. flicking yeah. up it was supposed to be tucked under and it, wouldn't, and it just and it worked and then it worked and I thought do you know what let's just roll with it see what happens well here, here's what we're gonna do Kev it's like can you repost that in your stories when we release the yeah, podcast yeah, so if sure. people listen to it they can um they can they can reference that for sure that, that it, we'll put it in a highlight maybe yeah, maybe yeah. that's a better so they can but it was um it. you know and things like that you know people will look at an image and be like oh my god that's amazing but then there's always a st- I always I always say there's always a story behind an image. You know, an image isn't just an image, like a haircut's mm-hmm. not just a haircut. There was always something in mind that you planned in order to get to there, you so, know? And, so an hour or two, uh, two hours later, was he, did he have a skin fade? Yeah, so basically it started, <laughs> it's a crazy thing. So it started off like this, which was like long. Mm-hmm. And then it basically went to that, mm-hmm. which was like the bowl. And then I decided just to cut a mullet in his hair, but then oh. fade it through. Um, and then ended up chopping his bangs off and just having it real textured. And basically the end result ended up like that. Oh, wow. Short back and size. Okay, so, so now you're going to have to do a highlight. I know. Just call, images <laughs> and, just call it like podcast images or something exactly. on your highlights. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's... But that's um, kind of brilliant, man. But that's the thing, you know, at the end of the day, you know, like plans never go to the way that you want it to be. Mm-mm. You know, like we plan to do a podcast, like what? 15 we, times? Yeah, 15 times. <laughs> like, you know... And it's like, you just got to roll with it sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, never, never try and think to yourself, a plan doesn't go the way that it doesn't go or that you didn't, doesn't go the way that you wanted it to go. Mm-hmm. Roll with it. And then, you know, it could actually be a better plan. Yeah, some of the best advice I ever got was that, and that's that, you know, there's never been a live event in the history of man that's gone without a hitch, oh, you know, just never, never, ever, ever. All the time. No you know, wedding, no rehearsal yeah. dinners, no anything. You know, I've, I've done shows before where I've had in mind that, you know, like I wanted the model to do something and they done the complete opposite. And then I'm just like, oh my God, what am I supposed to do? You know, it was like, you just got to go with it. You know, I've done it before where I've said to the model, okay, like, you know, it's a real tight call time. Call time's nine o'clock. We're on stage at 9.30. Come with your hair wash, no products in there. Comes out and night, night out, you know, 9.15, I'm like, right, we're on stage in 15 minutes. Your hair's all like shit. And I'm just like, oh. Like, you just go with it, you know? And it is what it is and it ain't what it ain't. So it's what it is and it ain't what it ain't. So you said next up's Brazil? Yeah, next but, up's Brazil. When you go home first or when you... Yeah, because because of the little boy, because uh, of Theo, like I'm going to go home. So I fly back home on Tuesday evening, back home on Wednesday. Spend time with family Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then Saturday evening fly to Brazil. What is that flight from the UK? You're from London? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Heathrow to Brazil is what? So I've got to go Heathrow to Sao Paulo, which I think, what's that, 12 hours or something like that. And then it's Belo Horizonte, which is like another like hour and a half up from there. But you know what? It's one of those ones, if, you know, the thought of it right now, thinking of that flight and thinking that the next day that I've got to prep hair and the time difference, I'm just like, fuck my life right now. <laughs> but I could be doing other things, can I? I could be like working in a coffee shop all mm. that my night you know not saying that you're going to be bored working in a coffee shop I like coffee well Kevin would be bored working yeah, in a I'd coffee shop right yeah. you know so, I'm always trying to like yeah so are you going as a barber a photographer or a hairdresser 
Well, actually, now that you said that, um, people ask me this question. Sorry, I've just like kind of like asking a question for myself. Yeah, why don't you start asking questions? To, I know. To I might, us. Should I just <laughs> right, why don't you take it over? People ask me that question. Like, yeah, are Gemini. you a bot? <laughs> I actually am. Get out! Hundred percent Gemini. Thirtieth of May. Don't May forget my 30th. birthday. Like presents. June eighth. Yes. What about you? Pisces through and through. Okay, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> um, Can't smell that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, people ask me the question: Are you a barber or are you a hairdresser? Um, because of the background of barbering, because mm-hmm. of the background of the toning guy, people and I, I always turn around and just say, you know what? I cut hair. Hair is hair to me. It doesn't matter if it's this short or if it's this long. You're still cutting hair. You know, you're still cutting someone's hair. Um, question to going to Brazil. It's a big barbering show that I'm doing over there. I actually just spoke to them like a couple of days ago. I've got four hours on stage. What? And I was like. Oh, <laughs> what the hell am I going to do in four hours? <laughs> I was like, I might send them for like a, a long two-hour lunch break. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. You're four hours at one time? Yeah, four hours. That, I'm t- that's four hours consistent. So I d- I've been to Brazil before. Um, you but, speak Portuguese? Uh, obrigado. De nada. That's about it. Um, <laughs> about a year and a half ago, and the Brazilians love barbering. Like, it's such oh. a massive trend over there. And when I went the first time around, I actually was on stage for three hours. Um, but this is a different company, and yeah, they said they want me for four hours. So now in my head, like, so I haven't planned anything yet, but so in my head, I'm starting to think, okay, what, what, how am I going to do this? What am I going to work? So I said, you know, I'm going to fit it in with videos. I'm going to fit it in with different models, presentations, you know, because four hours is a long time, and you need to keep them entertained. So, mm-hmm. yeah. We we'll see. <laughs> I, 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 That's gonna be awesome, actually. Been practicing my break dancing as well. <laughs> yeah. Trying to break break dance around the chair. You're gonna have to do something because I can't imagine four hours of barbering. Uh, I can do the worm. Yeah. I'm trying to do the worm across the face. <laughs> hey, tune <laughs> yeah. into your Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> we're really, this, we're oh, really there's Kevin doing, doing the worm. Right. <laughs> we have a big hallway here. <laughs> From uh, what did Gabriel call it? The undisclosed uh, location. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we're in the underground. That's it. <laughs> Dude, that's incredible, man. Yeah, so, yeah, looking forward to that one. And then um, September, got a couple of things in uh, Spain. And then October, there's the show for London, um, Sun International. Are, are you doing the uh, the tribute show that's in London? That's coming to London? No, no, I won't be. I'll probably attend it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's at the same time, Sun International, and sometimes it crosses over with the timings. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, I'll probably go to an event it. That's always a good show. I heard show. this year they're doing a big... Um it's uh they're doing a big tribute to trevor okay this year nice yeah so uh we tried to make it we just could we just couldn't we just couldn't pull the trigger yeah. you know to head over because again we, it's funny about yeah, we like love trevor yeah we love trevor like mm-hmm. like it's funny like you know there's we're we're kind of like just past like the vidal sassoon thing mm-hmm. and we're like we're, our half a generation you know our our big idol was 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 trevor sorby mm-hmm. nice. and uh and we actually got to speak to him a year ago and it was like it was nice. crazy if you listen to that podcast like Tony and I are kind of high fiving in our in our heads the whole time because we just couldn't believe it. At the end of the podcast, he invited us. We could, you know, to his house. We could stay with him when oh, we come amazing. over. So we're like, what? Mm-hmm. That's crazy. He hasn't called us back since. So. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Don't answer that call. Yeah, that was three years. <laughs> yeah. <ago. laughs> yeah. But um, did you have like um like like Trevor was kind of our like uh idol. Who were your who were, who were the guys that you looked up to when you first got in the industry? And- uh, you know. Another question I get asked you, you know, who who inspires you? Who do you, who do who did you look up to, like in the industry? You know, like who was it? Who you saw on stage doing this that, and the other? And like, legit, like no one. I know that sounds so bad, and like you know, it, but the reason why is because I never, I never, and I'm very clear with this. I never wanted to do what I'm doing now. Like, so it's not like I looked up to like, you know, Vidal Sassoon or like Tony and Guy, like, and be like, oh yeah, I really want to be like an art director. I really want to be, you know, do those particular haircuts or those hairstyles. Mm -hmm. Like, I suppose I just got inspired by just the love of the industry and like how people were so passionate about what they do. And it's just, you know, and then you get that from all different people, you know, not just people that have made it already, mm-hmm. but you get it from the assistants. You but get you even from, got the, hold on, you even got that at like first year in or second year in. I mean, when, you, when you're so green, you don't really know what's going on. Mm. That was still what the driving was. You weren't like looking at images and be like, wow, how'd they get that image or whatever? And who did that? Yeah, I was but just. Wasn't anything like that? No, I mean, 
you know, even when I was 20, what was I, maybe 26, 27, I actually stopped doing hairdressing. No, 26, actually, I stopped doing hairdressing. I um, I actually took three months out, still doing my regular clients, like at my mum and dad's house, and I actually applied to be a fireman. Get out, right? Yeah, really? I was just telling the story to Matty, and, you know, I, I got to the stage in my career where I was just like, oh, actually, do I really want to do this? Like, I was cutting air, like, and, yeah, I had my regular clients, but I was just like, well, I'm a bit bored, like, I want to try something a bit new and different, and then, yeah, took three months out, applied for to be a fireman, Obviously, you didn't get it. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, just I just missed it. And then at this point, like I said, I was still cutting hair, you know, just like regular clients. And then I was like, you know, I want to join back Tony and Guy. And I remember going to Tony and Guy, and this was just outside from where I lived because I didn't want to go back to the place where I was working before. Um, and I remember going, oh, you know, my name's Kevin. Like, you know, I used to work for Tony and Guy. Have you got any jobs going there? I was like, oh, no, unfortunately, we don't have anything. I was like, literally, look, you know, just even if it's part time, um, showed them my work. And I was like, okay, look, we can do something for you, but you'll have to work Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I wouldn't have a weekend because it was a shopping center. And I was like, yeah, cool, I'll take it. You know, and then at that point, they wouldn't give me full time. And I was like, right, what do I do with the rest of my time? So then I went back to college to learn, I think it was like my level three in like hairdressing, you know, which is like the next step. And, you know, I always just want to just do something. I get bored on days off. You know, people just want to like chill and watch Netflix. I'm just like, <laughs> nah, I'm good. <laughs> like I'll watch a YouTube clip of like learn something new. Um, where was that? I, I was in Spain, I think a couple, about a month ago. And I was like, you know what? I really fancy learning Spanish. I haven't started yet, but you know, so <laughs> <laughs> the thoughts in there, but like, you know, I, I'm that type of guy where I'm just like, I just want to learn. Like, I just love learning something new. I haven't thought about like learning a bit of like origami and like, you know, just cause I see this and start folding, start folding. Yeah. But I'm only, only good at rolling now. <laughs> 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 Joking. I don't smoke. No, no, no. It doesn't smell like it at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's my new aftershave. <laughs> It's called CBD. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. THC free. <laughs> exactly. Hmm. Well, actually, what are the pot laws in England? Uh, you're not allowed to smoke. You're not allowed to smoke? No, at it's, it's illegal. in the US, man. It's like, I know, it's crazy. That's why I love coming here. <laughs> <laughs> Say what? <laughs> CBD. Yes, yeah. CBD. Deliveroo. What? <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Kev, man, I, I kind of want to talk to you every year because it seems like every year you're up to something new and, and, and great. Always. Yeah, I mean, it's always something great. Always. You know? I've always got a story to tell, you know, like I've always, you know, for every, if, if we was to do this next year, like the conversation would be completely different, you know, I'd be probably- He'd, he'd do it all in Spanish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> I imagine that. Do it in Spanish. It's not like cheap um, and chong there, right? <laughs> but, you know, and that, that's the thing, you know, it's always about, you know, I-, I it, I love my friends to pieces back at home, like my close, close friends back at home that are not hairdressers. Are um, they are they friends or are they your mates? They're close. They're my buddies, man. Yeah, they're, yeah, yeah. they're my boys. And it's probably only a select, maybe like four or five of them that I see like on a reg. We might meet up like every two months. And I'm like, yo, so you know, how you guys been? You know, what you been up to? Ah, oh, you know, it's just the same, same. And I never want to get to that stage that I'm just the same, same. You know, I, I said to myself, like, I really just want to just always progress, always, you know, work forward and just keep it consistent. You know, when they ask me what you've been up to, I'm just like, oh, my God, I've got a massive list to tell. And they're just like, do you know what, Kev, shut up. No, we're, we're, yeah. <laughs> Which is great because it, they always keep me grounded. You know, they know what I do. They know who I am in the industry. They know, you know, the people I know, but they don't give a shit. And to be honest with you, that's what I like because they just like me. Who, for who I am do you know what I mean not what I am and unfortunately you know that's the thing in the industry like I always do question myself I'm like if I didn't win all the accolades I'd won done the things that I'd done would people actually want to talk to me and that's why I'd always talk to assistants I'd always talk to people that are new to the industry I'd always talk to the person like running around I'd talk to the production team because I'm like do you know what everyone has a story to tell yeah so you agreed to come on next year I got you all don't right. you worry all right Appreciate we'll, it. We'll have to get in touch with Curtis because he doesn't yeah. respond to his DMs. <laughs> <laughs> no. Exactly. So, yeah, so don't make us call Curtis. <laughs> uh, Mr. Kevin Lutchman. 
Perfect. Perfect. Look at that. He did teach us English after all. That's it. Dude, thanks for joining us. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for giving us some time. Thank you for having me. It's been a real pleasure. Before, Actually, before we we, we do get off, is there anything, uh, or how do our listeners find you? How do do they follow you? How do they keep up with, with the craziness yeah, just don't DM me because I'm always busy my right. notifications are turned <laughs> they just want to watch you <laughs> <laughs> how can they watch you <laughs> okay so there's this uh, website called no, I'm um, so you can catch me on kevinluchman.com um, that will happen that's to- L-U-C-H-M-O-N U-N U-N oh my god oh, I'm god. gone now microphone drop Oh. <laughs> uh, yes, that's L U C H M. Obviously, you don't follow my notes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like my bad, my bad. Got that out. Um, and also at Kevin Lutchman on my Instagram. But um, yeah, I'm always keeping up to date with what I'm doing. You know, I'm always as interactive like on my social media unless your name's Corey right <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> yeah. block block report delete <laughs> um, exactly. but yeah you know other than that I'm always in the states as well so like I said it'll be a real pleasure to come back to you guys speak to you guys keep you updated with what I'm up to and it'll be nice it. to hear what you guys are saying as well now we're going to harass you yes yeah, please yeah. harass me awesome yeah, yeah. and definitely put that highlight up so that whole conversation we had is definitely. relevant to somebody I will do for sure. <laughs> for awesome sure. Kevin thank you very very much for joining us on well you don't have one but your day off thank you very much guys Hey, hey, so there it is. Hey, this is a message that um, we've been trying to bring, I don't know, for the last couple of months, actually since we started the podcast. Hey, so if you like the podcast or if you find that it's useful, please, please, please leave us a review, a five-star review on iTunes. Um, leave us a rating and a review. But if you don't like it, forget about it. <laughs> yeah, totally forget about this message. We also want to thank Sarah and Blaine from Pretty Gritty. Uh, Sarah and Blaine, they are a band out of uh, Portland, Oregon, and we just want to thank them very much for allowing us to use their song, Pleased to Meet You, on our podcast. Um, that's cool. I think you can find... Actually, you can. You can find their music on, um, on iTunes. Peace and hair grease. <laughs>